Today I'm going to talk about getting some keyboard input, which is fairly easy since we have the standard library. First, let me just write a few words. C out. Enter your name. F5. Okay, this is a starting point for our app. Let me add a line. Okay. Now we need to get the input from the user. I'm going to create an array of characters. Array of characters. I'm just going to say 128 characters max. And then I'm going to get the input using this syntax. C in. Put it into array of characters. Once we get the name, I'm going to add a new line. And then I'll say your name is, and I'm going to use the data array of characters. I'm going to press F5. Okay, here's our app. My name is Round Bear Games. Okay, we get the result. One thing that you really have to be careful is this. Let's say we only have three characters. I'm going to run my code again, and I'm going to type more than three, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Press Enter. Okay, we get an error message from Visual Studio. Basically, this means that your memory is corrupted. Let's try debugging this. First, let me put in some values, something like cat as a three-letter word, C, A, T. I'm going to put a breakpoint here, F9, run the debugger. And I'm going to look at the, the memory for the array of our characters. Okay, I'm going to set this to one byte. I'm going to set this to one. As you can see, we have a byte for each of our letters. Let me put another breakpoint here and then press continue. Then I'm going to say A, B, C, D, E, F, G, which is way more than three. I'm going to press enter. Now we literally see our problem. We only declared this amount of memory, but all of a sudden we're changing values in all this memory. This might crash your app or give you funny results because other parts of your code might be using this part of your memory. Something like this is critical to any app because when you save some data as a variable, you don't expect that to change unless you change it yourself. Basically, you want your input to be bound by the size of your array. And that's pretty easy. We have another syntax called width. And then I'm going to put in size of our array. I'm going to run this again, F5. Okay, I'm going to put in A, B, C, D, E, F, G, just like last time. Press Enter. Now, instead of getting the error message, we only use these letters. We might have another issue. The size of the array is 3, so you might ask, why are we only getting two letters? Well, let's try debugging this again. I'm going to set breakpoints in the beginning and at the end, run the debugger. Let's take a look at our address, array of characters. Okay, we see our value, cat. I'm going to press continue. For our app, input cat. Instead of getting cat, we get ca and then this thing. This is a null character. It's just a single byte that tells you that it's the end of your input. Here, you know exactly how many ones and zeros you're going to be using. But here, you need that extra byte that basically tells the computer where it ends. But most of the time, you don't have to worry about this. If you have something like 128 characters, one byte is not going to really make a difference. I'm going to run this again. And then I'm going to input the longest name that I know. Nick Datu Aron No Nickman. Not sure if I spelled this correctly. Sorry, Nick. 
Okay, most of the time you don't have to worry about that single byte. The key takeaway here is that if you're doing something wrong, you need to debug to literally see with your own eyes what it is that you're doing wrong. There's other options in the standard library that let you not worry about stuff like this. But for this video, I'm just trying to keep things as simple as I can by declaring a certain data type and then staying within the boundaries of that memory. So that's pretty much it. Try debugging this yourself. And here's your homework assignment. Now, instead of just saving a name in a single variable, try five names, try saving five names in an array. I don't care how you do this, just do whatever you can using everything that you've learned. Also move on to getting five inputs of five integers and add them all up. And then when you're done with one and two, create your own struct that has your friends' names and phone numbers and save five of those in an array, something like this. You get the name input, you also get the phone number, and then print everything in your console menu. Okay, that's it for this video. If you have any questions, you can reach me on my Discord server. I have all the links below. Thanks for watching. See you next time.